everybody, it's Carrie from the Rapid City Public Library, your friendly local teen librarian. I'm happy to see you all here to join us for our second virtual teen crafter noon. Um, if you picked up any of the summer reading paperwork or watched last week's video, you know that we're supposed to be doing a wildlife triptych. However, due to some ordering difficulties, we're actually going to jump ahead and we're going to do unicorn pillows this week. So don't worry. We're going to be doing the triptych next week instead. Uh, if you picked up your bags, um, it'll have all of the materials for this and I'll go over what those are. So in case you didn't get a chance to pick up a bag, you might still be able to kind of put one of these together with some stuff that you have at home. All right, let's take a look at what you guys got in your bags this week. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we've got in our bags. This is going to be your pattern piece, one for the head, one for the ear, and we're going to cut out two of each onto these. So the head and then the ears. We've got a rainbow mane. We've got the polyfill that will turn it into a pillow. You should have two lengths of golden embroidery thread, one needle, two cutouts that will join together with these glue dots to make the unicorn horn. And if you take a closer look at what the pillow looks like, you can kind of see how everything's going to go together and how we'll turn all of these materials into a unicorn. Um, and then I'll show you how to thread that needle and how to do the two different stitches that we've got that sort of turn this into a pillow. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is cut around the black lines on these pattern pieces. You're gonna put those onto the felt and trace around them and cut that out. And once you've gotten to that point, we'll go ahead and I'll tell you what to do next from there. Okay, so I have my two ears cut out and I have my two Head pieces cut out and the nice thing about felt is that it's the same on both sides and it's very forgiving my cutting may not be even all the way around and you can kind of see where I traced on there but I can flip those around and then no one has to see where I had drawn and I can do the same thing with these I'm gonna flip them around and no one has to see my tracing marks. And basically, what we're going to do is we're kind of building a sandwich. So think of your unicorn heads as the two pieces of bread, and then our mane and our ears and our horn is going to be the filling that's going to get stuck between the two pieces of bread. So before we go any further with that, I'm gonna take my two horn pieces and I am going to use one of these glue dots. So the glue is stuck on there and I am going to stick it to the bottom, the wider part of the horn, and then kind of take off that clear part so you've got just the sticky glue part left and I'm going to do the same thing again with another dot so peel off that back got my sticky piece put it right on the horn take off the clear plastic bit and then I can stick these two horn pieces together and it won't be as flimsy as one piece. It'll be a little bit stronger and it'll stand up a little straighter. Okay, so now we're gonna get that out of the way and we're gonna build that sandwich like I was talking about. So the first thing that's gonna go between these two pieces of bread is the unicorn horn. So we'll figure out kind of where we want that to go. And we're gonna figure out where we want the ears to go. So it's kind of starting to look like a unicorn. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. And you want to make sure 
that this line that's sewn into the ribbon is going to get covered up by where you're going to sew. So you want to put that in between, in between the two layers, just enough that you won't be able to see that white line. Okay, next comes kind of a tricky part. So we're going to take this golden thread and we are going to put it on our needle so that we can start sewing the unicorn pillow together. And I don't know if you guys, how well you guys can see this, but there's a lot of different tiny threads that come together to make this one big thread. And that can make it really difficult to thread a needle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin these and spin these and spin these so that it gets this part here will start to curl around on itself. It's going to get pretty tight, but none of those pieces are going to be escaping. And that is the part that I'm going to try to feed through the eye of the needle. And then when you pull that whole loop through like this, you can pull it through and all of the pieces will come together. And that way you're not trying to stick all of this frayed end through that eye of the needle. And then you're gonna, you're gonna pull it down a little bit so that it won't unthread too easily. And then on the other end, you are going to tie a knot. Now, the first kind of stitch that we're gonna do is this part here. And it's the trickier bit. And basically, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this needle and we're gonna be putting it through all of the layers. All of the layers once this way, and then we're gonna do it again and go through all of the layers back the other way. So you'll get a bump here, and this part where you don't see the thread is where it's made a bump on this other side. So, turn my, I'm gonna turn this around a little bit. And I'm gonna gather up all of my sandwich pieces together. And I'm gonna put this needle through all four layers that are there. And then I'm gonna pull it right through, all the way until that knot stops it. And then with my thread on this side, I'm gonna put it through all four layers again, coming back to the bottom side. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. I'll do it a couple more times so you guys can see. Coming all the way through all four layers and all the way back through all four layers. And you can kind of start to see where those little lumps are gonna be of the thread. And they may be in a straight line for part of it, and they may be not in a straight line for part of it. But you're gonna do that all the way across the horn, all the way across the ears, and all the way down the mane. And then when you get to this last part, we're just gonna tie another knot to secure that line of stitching so that it won't be able to come out. And then we're gonna use this other piece of thread and I'm gonna teach you a different stitch to go around the rest of it. Okay, so I have my stitches going through the horn, the ears, the mane. I'm gonna show you a quick trick about how to tie off that end. The last stitch that you do, if you don't go all the way through the sandwich, you just go through that top piece of bread. And that's where you can tie your knot. And it's just like tying a knot and anything else. You just wanna keep it as close as you can to the end of that stitch. 
So I'm going to use my fingers to try to pull it tight at the same time, keeping it right close to there. And then I am going to cut off that thread and take it out. And I'm going to get ready this next thread. So remember how we talked about spinning it, spinning it, spinning it, spinning it so that it gets, so you can't see a whole lot of those extra pieces. And that's the part that I'm gonna put through the eye of the needle, pull that through, and then down at the other end, now I had some trouble with this last week. We'll try to make it a little easier this time. We're going to tie that double knot. Okay. Now this stitch is actually easier and it'll probably take you way less time. Even though we've got a lot more to do, don't worry about it. So you've got your two slices of the sandwich. And if the knot in this one only came through this side, when I start this one, I'm only going to go through the back side. And the reason I'm going to do that is so I can hide all of this in between those two pieces. Okay, so I've gone from the top to the bottom, but instead of coming back through, I'm just kind of going to wrap that around and then I'm going to go top to bottom again through my sandwich. So you're going to have kind of a loop that's going to go. So I went top to bottom again and I'm going to wrap that loop again. Then I'm going to put my needle through the top, through to the bottom. You can see the bottom where it's coming out. And I'm going to do it again. And that's what we're going to do for the rest of this. Now when you get to the place right about here, I'm going to have you stop. And we're going to use this area for the fluff to go in. And then we'll finish whip stitching all the way to the end. So I'm going to meet you guys right back here when we're about this far, okay? Okay, so I've got my stitches going pretty much almost all the way around. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my needle kind of through the fabric right there so that I won't lose it. It's going to stay with the thread through it, but it's not going to get in my way for this next part. So we've got all the polyfill, and I just kind of like to... Make sure it's loose and cloud-like and as fluffy as it can possibly be. And then very little by little, open up your sandwich. <laughs> and you're just kind of going to stick that in there. And you're just going to keep filling with little bits. Keep pushing so it goes all the way down. I'm going to have a half-filled pillow. Grab a little more here. Keep. Goes all the way to the back of the head. Just kind of keep fluffing. And it kind of depends on you if you like a softer pillow or you like a pillow that's like totally stuffed. I like mine a little bit softer. So I'm probably going to stop about there because that gives me a nice padded pillow. And I will take my needle out of there. And I'm just going to continue. Probably two more stitches here. And that's going to bring me right back pretty much to where I started. 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the needle through and this loop that I have left, I'm going to stick my needle through it and pull it shut. And I'm going to do that again. And then I'm going to put my needle through those two stitches and through that loop one more time. Then I've got a pretty good knot. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut as close to that knot as I can get. And if there are any other spots where you see thread kind of hanging out or stuffing or any parts that you don't particularly want in your pillow, you can take those out too. But that gives us our unicorn pillow. All right, guys, thank you for joining us to make our unicorn pillows this week. Um, like I said, next week we're going to be doing what we're supposed to be doing this week, the triptychs. Um, you can pick up your bags with all of their materials starting Sunday morning, and then the video will be posted the following Saturday morning. So thanks for joining us on our virtual craft afternoon. Uh, don't forget to check out, we've got some Reader's Advisory videos coming up on our YouTube page as well. So have a good week, and I'll see you next Saturday.